Welcome to this week's Paratech webinar. We're going to be talking today about the heavy vehicle extrication kit. My name is Mike Uliberry, one of the Western Regional Sales Manager, and today I'll be joined by our training manager, Nigel Leatherby, and other regional sales managers, Robert O'Donnell and James K. Nigel will we'll be trying something different this week. Nigel will be coming live to you, doing some live demos uh, from head Paratech headquarters. So uh, bear with us as we uh, work through something new that we're trying this week. So we actually have some live uh, hands-on events to show you. The webinars that we've had so far, you can see on this screen, we are on the heavy vehicle extrication kit today. Um, next week, we'll follow up this series of webinars with the strut driver. And then we'll be moving on to a whole new series that uh, you can look for on our website. Little history on Paratech, veteran owned and operated since 1962. Our factory uh, headquarters is right out of Fra in Frankfurt, Illinois. Everything uh, USA made. Um, the other regional sales managers for the United States, besides the ones I mentioned, are Chris Frampstead and John Line. The remainder of the Paratech, Paratech uh, rescue team will be on the Q&A section that you can see to the right hand side of your screen. So if you have any questions or anything throughout the webinar, the hands on event, go ahead and type those in there. Um, they'll get back with you. They're not as fast as a 911 dispatch typer, so uh, be a little patient with them, but your answer will eventually show back up in the Q&A section. Just a safety warning, a PowerPoint presentation and the hands on video that you'll see today for informational purposes only. No substitute for taking a good hands on training class taught by qualified instructors. Always remember regular hands on training is necessary to become proficient with this, uh, these pieces of equipment and any improper use of them could cause serious injury or death. So always think safe, act safe, be safe. And remember, if you lift an inch, support an inch, meaning use cribbing or a strut. The heavy vehicle extrication kit comes with a lot of equipment in it. It's pretty much an interstate kit, uh, hydrofusion kits, as well as a VSK kit with a multi-force. So you can see here, this is just a list of all the equipment that is in this package. Um, this is all the longshores and the hydrofusion kits, as well as extensions, uh, V-bases, contour bases, multi-bases. You'll get uh, pickets, ratchet belts, grade 100 chain, um, a VSK controller, and the rapid extrication kit is another kit that's within this kit. So you'll have a VSK setup as well as a remote placement multi-force kit. So really this, this kit can handle anything really that you uh, could come across. Combined uh, loads of over 200,000 pounds and any load height from two feet to 16 feet. So you have plenty of struts to be able to do stop the crush, stabilization, chasing the load, and then you'll be uh, with your lifting devices, you'll have the hydrofusions as well as a multi-force. So right now we're going to go live uh, to Nigel Leatherby from uh, Paratech headquarters. Nigel. Good morning. Welcome to Paratech Training Grounds. My name is Nigel Lederby. I'm a training manager for Paratech. We're here to go over some scenarios this morning. This is the, the, the sixth in our webinar series. This is for the biggest kit we do for vehicles. It incorporates all the kits we got. Uh, we got three demos set up for you. We've got a couple of underrides and a shift and shift in place. We're going to take a look at that. Then we're going to take a look at using not only the gray struts, but the gold struts, the long shores. We've got hydrofusion set up. We've got different, using the different chains and everything else. So I'm going to put you back over to uh, James Kolakowski. He's now regional manager in the, the Midwest, and he's going to go through the highway vehicle stabilization kit. Hey, good morning, everybody. This is the uh, 
you know, second time I've joined you here. Uh, we're going to talk just a few minutes uh, regarding stabilization here this morning. Appreciate you being out there in the field, Nigel. I know it's a little warm up there in Chicago, but uh, spend just a couple minutes talking about stabilization. Now, in our last several webinars, we've covered this uh, fairly extensively, both in our uh, standard kit as well as the highway vehicle stabilization kit. We've talked a little bit about tiebacks. We've talked about angles of shores. Uh, big thing is as we go up, uh, in vehicle sizes as we go up in loads, we need to be a little bit more concerned about how we're actually tying those bases down. So if we take a look at those different tie down options, we're going to take a look at ratchet straps. Now, of course, ratchet straps have a, a load rating of 3,300 pounds a piece. One of the ways we can overcome that load rating though and give you a little bit higher capacity is by doubling up those straps, uh, which is what you see here in that picture. Uh, we can also use chains, chains to tie those bases together for these heavy vehicles because uh, again, you know, unlike the highway kit where we're limited to just four shores, really the sky's the limit as far as what we can support here. So we start getting into chains. We can use both three eighths inch chain as well as half inch chain to tie those bases together. Uh, those working load limits are going to be shown on those chains uh, that you've got there in your house. Uh, as we move on, some other ways we can actually tie those bases down. We can use pickets. Uh, we can use bolts. We can also use physical stops such as curbs. So keep in mind that you don't necessarily always have to uh, directly tie this to the ground. Um, but as we go through this, really the big thing is that common applications remain the same. All right. So the common applications we already covered in those previous webinars, uh, both the highway uh, vehicle stabilization kit as well as the standard vehicle stabilization kit, um, really applies also to larger vehicles as well. We're just obviously dealing with higher loads. We're dealing with uh, taller working heights, uh, etc. So all those past webinars are going to be available for review at the link that you're going to get from your regional sales managers here uh, just a little bit later today. But just a quick refresher, you know, we've got the standard tension buttress system that we've showed previously uh, on light passenger vehicles. That same but, uh, tension buttress system, though, will work just fine on uh, larger vehicles, as you see here. So again, the highway kit may be a short, uh, you know, a little bit lighter load uh, type kit than what we're working with, but the same applications, the same setup arrangements, uh, all that's going to be universal, be it uh, larger vehicles using these larger kits or uh, smaller vehicles with some of our more uh, common kits that are out there in the field. Uh, we can also do stop the crush and we talked a little bit about stop the crush in uh, my last webinar uh, where we're setting up a, a individual shore to keep that load from actually dropping down further uh, we're also setting that up in conjunction with a stabilization shore so it's kind of a combo uh, type setup here uh, we also talked a little bit about uh, same side stabilization last time around and that same side stabilization where we're actually setting a couple shores up on the dirty side of the vehicle, uh, providing tension against those couple shores. And what that does for us is actually completely leaves the uh, top side, the clean side of the vehicle, uh, free for extrication and patient care. Uh, no matter, we're going to go ahead and uh, take a step back out uh, to Nigel out in the field uh, at this point. We're going to take a look and see what he's got it set up for us and uh, look forward to giving us a shot. So thanks for joining us today. Welcome back. We're here. We're at the highway VSK scenario. As you see, we got a fuel tanker. We got an SUV. SUV lost control on one side of the road. Hit, came over the centre medium, which is a Jersey barrier. End up coming down. Tanker coming the other way, lost control. Seen the SUV come over the top. Came up. SUV slid under. Tanker ended up on the on the SUV. So what we did. We come in, we locked out both vehicles, step chucks and 6x6 and 4x4s or whatever we need to use on that. Then we come in, we stabilize the tanker first. As you can see, the tank is teeter-tottering on the SUV, so we need to stabilize that weight. We come in with uh, a couple of 25 to 36 inch Acme rescue struts here, one this side and one on the other side of the SUV. We locked it out in place. Because there's no real place over there where I could have put a ratchet strap onto the base, we decided to use some pickets. If you're on asphalt and you do want to use pickets, then if there's something on the other side where you can park a rig or something like that, you can put your ratchet straps to that just to hold your uh, rescue struts in place. So the tank is stabilized. Now we're taking a look at the SUV. The SUV is here. If they decide to move the tanker, then the SUV may have a problem. You may want to teeter-totter on the Jersey barrier. So using the highway VSK where we've got four struts, four bases, four heads, and a series of extensions, I can come in with my other two struts and stabilize the, the SUV. The rescuer's coming in. He's going to place the strut in place. 
We've actually come up to the frame of the vehicle. There's a nice spot in there for the frame of the vehicle. I'll help John out. He's going to place the, the ratchet strap on. He's going to take up the slack of the ratchet strap. Then he's going to tighten it in place to cause your tension buttress. A little bit more. Okay, put the ratchet down. Lock the ratchet handle in place so it doesn't cause a trip hazard. Manage all your, your 27 foot of belt or whatever, whatever's left so it's not a trip hazard. It doesn't get in your way. We're in place. We locked in. John's going to check the SUV to see if it's stable. SUV is pretty stable. We've stabilized both the tanker and the SUV with the Highway VSK. Now we're ready to go. We can extricate in place or it can be just left there for when the tow truck comes in, <coughs> moves the tanker so that the SUV doesn't move. Thank you for watching the first demonstration of the Highway VSK. I uh, hope you'll be back for the second one. We'll be back here. We'll be here sweating. It's a nice day, but it's nice and breezy. So thank you. We're going to go back into the studios now with uh, Mike Ullaberry. Hello, everybody. Uh, we're going to do a review of the Hydrofusion now. Uh, we had a webinar on this a few weeks back, so I just do some highlights on it so that uh, we could then go back live to Nigel. So just to review, the Hydrofusion strut is a hydraulic strut. It can lift uh, 10 tons with the two to one safety factor. And when the collar is set down or in the lock position, you'll still have that 20,000 pound with the uh, rating with a four to one safety. So 80,000 pound one to one. Um, it, the top of it does allow for both Acme thread and the longshore struts, as well as extensions to fit in there securely. The Hydrofusion strut comes in three different sizes or of lift or throw in the threads. So you have a four inch lift, a 10 inch lift, and a 16 inch lift. The biggest difference between the Hydrofusion strut and our Acme thread or our longshores, it's the same diameter as our gold or longshore strut, However, the differences are, as I mentioned, it's a hydraulic strut, so you won't, it, it's not meant to be manually adjusted, like we can move the moving end out of the tube side of our struts and adjust the collar. This is more fixed and to be used with the pump. You'll also notice that you see the hydraulic coupling on the side with the swivel, but you don't see an air nipple on it. So it can't be used like we would in chasing a load um, with our uh, Acme thread or longshores or it can't be used in a trench uh, as well as uh, the other struts can with, with uh, the uh, dual dead man and stuff like that to shoot them in the trench. The Hydrofusion pump, two-stage pump, uh, it does have a gauge on it that's there. That goes to 10,000 PSI. Uh, just a little rule of thumb when you're lifting is as you have a load on that strut that you're pumping, if you look down and see what the reading is on there, if you multiply that by two, that is a ballpark figure of how much weight is on that hydrofusion strut. It's a similar rule of thumb just to get an idea as when we're talking about our maxi force airbags and we're kind of guesstimating the square inches of surface area contact on the bag versus the object. And then we multiply that by the PSI we see in our dual dead man. And again, that's a rule of thumb field use just to, to get an idea of how much weight we have on the piece of equipment that we're using. When you do your connection and your disconnection, this is important so that you don't get pressure in the line or uh, disconnect it, lose some fluid. So when you wanna make your connection, the thumb tab that you see shown in the picture here, I'm just gonna turn that all the way counterclockwise so it's in the open or free position. That's how I want to have it when I make my connection and my disconnection when I'm done using the hydrofusion. If I have it all the way counterclockwise, I make my connection. I can then turn that thumb valve clockwise until it stops. It just has to be finger tight. You do not have to crank on it. And then I can do my lift. When I'm done and we've uh, removed the hydrofusions, we want to make sure that we have the collars all the way back up turn that thumb valve counterclockwise so the strut fully seats itself again and i got all the fluid that had been in the pump pushed into that hydrofusion to do my lift it's now back in that pump 
one thing you'll notice there's a red piece of tape on that handle it's just another photo of it here you have a red piece of tape on the handle i also have a red piece of tape at the bottom of the collar on this one um, i have mine labeled out with various colors but that way i know i marry those two together um, and then if for some reason after a call or after a training event if somebody lowered this one and the collar was set part way and it wasn't seated all the way in i still have fluid in that strut if i don't have them marked out in any way then it becomes very difficult to know which one you're just guessing 50 50 chance on which one was hooked to that strut if you guess wrong there will be too much fluid in one of the pumps and it'll start to leak the other one won't have enough and it won't lift effectively so um, day one when i come out with crews that we do an in-service training with i carry a bunch of tape in my rig Go ahead and tape them out, label them up so that you know which one goes together. So if you run into that, you can hook the correct pump up to that strut, get the proper amount of fluid back in it and, and put them away so they're ready for the next use. Some of the accessories that you use primarily with hydrofusion or in chasing um, on the left would be the strut converter. So this double male piece would go directly in the hydrofusion and then we would put something like the third picture, the contour base on top of that so we could do a direct frame lift on a heavy vehicle um, we can if we needed to have a higher uh, adjustment point we could put an extension with that in it and make it a fixed strut or we could put a strut in if we have a higher insertion point the next picture the second one in is the acme thread screw adapter this also comes in the longshore screw adapter and this would be if i put this in if for some reason i had an elevated point that we were going to lift and I needed to, if you will, invert a strut so the collar is down, then this allows enough uh, throat, if you will, in that for the connection to be solid so we don't lose any of the rating and we still are at full capacity. I mentioned this third one already, the contour base. This is really my go-to uh, as far as using this on a direct frame lift. Um, you could also use it on your chasing struts as well and do a direct frame chase. If for some reason, you don't have the room and you needed to uh, rig outside of the frame uh, whether it's to lift or chase with this is our multi-chain base it's really good for that um, because i can pull the chain up in between those two uh, aggressive uh, edges that you see there that go against the object pull the chain straight up through that and drop it down in and it makes a really tight starting point where in some chain connections you're always a, a link a link and a half away from uh, having a solid base this will help you start off uh, without having any slack in the chain really and it accepts 3 8 chain but it also accepts half inch round and half inch flat um, again just as a reminder paratech teams on the Q&A section so if you have any questions at all go ahead and throw those up there and they'll answer them for you one of the last accessories I want to talk about is the VSK controller so this is used in conjunction with your stabilization or supporting struts so that as I lift with a hydrofusion or airbags as that object is coming up uh, really in, in heavy vehicle nobody really carries enough cribbing to get that job done or get it done effectively so if we put our struts in play instead of having to hold that strut against the object and move the collar as the object goes up it's much safer and effective if we have this device in place so the air goes to each strut it, it will vent at 25. It's really running at about 17 PSI, which is just enough pressure to take place of the human hand holding that against the object as that heavy object is being lifted. So it, it keeps us right in line with the lifting an inch and supporting an inch. So I can just spin a collar as we're lifting and coming up with that when I have this VSK controller in play. It's also great as well. I don't, I can turn it on, set it anything from 50 to 200 and whether the load is coming up or going down it will still chase it in either direction and make it very safe uh, as far as having those uh, stabilization struts in place for it all right now that we've done a review of the hydrofusion and these accessories we're going to go back out to uh, paratech headquarters and go back live to nigel for a demonstration on an underride uh, vehicle on a school bus with a hydrofusion lift nigel Welcome back. <clears throat> we have the second scenario in this webinar. 
This way we got a school bus. We got under right under the back of the school bus. Hit that pace. School bus resting on the A post that are bent. Resting, pushing the, the steering wheel down in the driver's lap. So this scenario, we need to lift the school bus up. I uh, need a couple of options, either extricate in place or we're going to remove the smaller vehicle from the from the school bus. This one we're going to lift up and extricate in place. So the first thing we did when we did the 360 is we blocked out the smaller vehicle and the school bus. So there's no forward to back movement. Then we come in and we put our stop the crush struts in. We put a stop the crush strut here and there. Strong part of the school bus is the bumper. That way it stops the bus crushing any further. Because every minute the bus sits here in free, in free air, the bus is sinking, the material of the car on the underside is giving, and it's sinking, 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 sinking. So just by doing something downright and dirty and fast, stop the crush will go in either side, keep the school bus there, stop the school bus going down any further. When they're in place, we'll take a look. We're going to come in, and we're going to set up for our stabilization on the school bus. What we've done on this one, we've taken two 72 to 116 struts, longshore struts, I should say, and two longshore extensions, 24 inch. We got a contour head at the top, our hinge base at the bottom. I use the contour head on the top of the school bus if I'm going into a window frame. Because of the curve, it goes in and captures a lot of material up there. I can still use my multi head with, with a V base if I need to, but the problem is. With a V-base, you've got to make sure you go inside that window and capture the inside material. What it the V-base has a tendency to do is just capture that rain rail, and it bends the rain rail up. So you've got to be careful with that. You've got to check that. The other thing I could have done with this, I've got to come in with another chain off the frame, bring the chain up, hook the chain into the multi-head, and held it that way. So this is the way we chose on this one. So my struts, my... Stabilization struts are in place, one here, one over there, at around about the same angle. This is around about 60 degrees. I like 60 degrees on this because of the compression on the base. It's not putting too much stress on my chain at the bottom. So if you take a look on my stabilization, I'm using chain to tie the base to base and not a ratchet strap. It's not wrong not to use a ratchet strap. It's fine, you can use them. I chose the chain because when I'm dealing with heavy vehicles, I prefer chain over ratchet straps. It's less likely for something to go wrong. What I mean by that is, as I'm dragging the ratchet strap on the underside of this vehicle, I don't know what's on the road or, or, or on the side of the road. So as I'm dragging that ratchet strap out, I don't know if the center of that belt's going to get cut or not. With chain, it takes that out of, the, out of the equation. And if you take a look what I'm using, I'm using my slip hooks. I got two sets of chains here. I got a 10 foot chain that, that Mike just talked about with a slip hook going to the other base. Then I got my 30 link chain with a slip hook going onto my 10 foot chain link in the other base. Slip hook is going through the, the anchor ring. Then I got my chain binder in place. My chain binder is here. When you use a chain binder, always make sure the handle goes down. That way, there's no trip hazard or anything. I tighten them up. My Stabilization is in place. Then, I've, as you see, I got an air hose coming off my longshore. That's going to a VSK controller at the back. So I've got air going into these longshores. So as I lift with my lifting lifting equipment, my strut chases the load. So then, that's all I've got to do, or the rescuers have got to do, is spin the collar down. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to set up for my lifting device. My lifting device, I'm using two 10 inch hydrofusions with a 36 to 50 inch longshore on them. I didn't use the Acme rescue struts on there because I used them on the highway vehicle stabilization prop. So there's enough struts in this kit that I, I can manage to use shorter ones when, when I don't have to use the longer. So with my hydrofusion in place, my chain in place, I'm using a new chain uh, configuration that we, we are trying out. This one's a half inch chain, but the half inch chain on the inside, I've got what's called a frame hook. So basically that's all I did with this. I reached in and I hooked the frame. The nice C frame that's on these heavier vehicles, I hooked that, brought it up, brought it through my multi chain head, 
With that, I can drag the chain, and it tightens the chain up. It drops back to a default link, then I spin my collar up to tighten in place. With my lifting devices, I decided to use pickets. Reason is I can't see uh, a line of sight to the other base. The, the front end of the car is there. And if I were to use ratchet straps or chain on this, I'd be ratcheting on the underside of this vehicle. I didn't really want to put anybody in on the underside of this vehicle until it's all safe and tight. So I opted for pick, pickets on this one. There are pickets in that big kit. So we're trying to show a little bit of everything. So my chain hook is on. Everything's locked out. Next thing I've done, I went in and we ratchet strapped the suspension of the smaller vehicle down. Now, depending on what you're going to do with a smaller vehicle, whether it be extricate in place or if you want to drag the vehicle out. The thing you've got to watch when you're putting your, your ratchet straps on, I've opted to extricate in place. So I don't know if you can see it, but with my ratchet strap, it's hard to get the ratchet strap on the front end of this vehicle because there's not that much space in there. So with extricate in place, what I did, I put a piece of web or a prusik through the bottom spokes of the wheel, brought the hook down lower and hooked it on. Same on the other side, it brings the handle down about maybe five, six inches. So I'm able to ratchet strap up and not make contact with the bus. Some things you've got to watch when you do your lift on a bus. The first 12 to 15 inches is just superficial material. Your, your floor starts here, which is at this level. So that's where the strong material is. So as you see, the chain is biting in there. I put this ratchet strap around from my lifting chain all the way around the back of the bus to the other part of the chain, the other lifting chain over there, just so as my chain doesn't slide up the wheel well and it keeps my lifting device where it needs to be. So with everything in place, my, <clears throat> my smaller vehicle suspension is ratchet strapped down. My stop the crush strut is tight. Everything is good to go. Now what I'm going to do is I've got a rescuer on this pump and I've got a rescuer on the pump over there. So now we're going to take the bus up a little ways. As the bus goes up, you'll see a gap form in between the collars. Always remember, lift an inch, support an inch. There's only three of us here. I got one rescuer at one pump, one rescuer at another pump. And I'm doing all the talking. So in essence, I'd have another rescuer here at this, this stabilization and hydrofusion. I'd have another rescuer at that stabilization and hydrofusion. As it goes up, they spin the collar. So you have to bear with us on this one. With the, with the times that they are, we can't have too many people here just to, because of what it is. So if you take a look on my struts, on my struts, I've got some marks on there that show some different degrees. My going back to my stabilization is about 60 degrees, but my hydrofusion, my lifting device is close to 80 degrees. So it's going to push up and not push this way. So I'm going to step back a little ways. Everything's tight. Everything's on. Rescuers, handles up on the pump. Are we ready? OK, start pumping down. Pump. 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 Pump, 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 stop. I've gone up about maybe an inch. I'm going to put my stabilization up. I'm going to bring my collar down on the, on the hydrofusion. What that does for me, I'm going to do another 360 on this, make sure everything's okay. Bus is doing good. It's coming off the car. We're off the car. I'm going to give it one or two more pumps and we should be good to extricate in place. Rescuers, handles up. Rescuers, you ready? Pump. 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 Stop. We good there. I'm going to lock out my stabilization strut. Now, by locking out my hydrofusion strut, my hydrofusion has gone from a two to one safety factor with a lift to a four to one safety factor. So basically, if you take a look at what I've got here, I've got two feet, six feet, and maybe another foot. So I've got maybe nine feet here. At nine feet, 
I've got approximately, where are we? 12,000 pound at the four to one. 24,000 pound at a two to one on this particular strut. If you take a look at my hydrofusion, I've got a 36 inch, a three foot long shore that's out about four inches. And I got my hydrofusion down there. So I've lost no capacity with my lifting strut. So by locking this collar out, I've gone back to a 20,000 pound capacity on here, four to one, or a 40,000 pound capacity or a two to one. So the strength of these two struts here and the same over there is ample enough for me to stabilize this school bus in place. Now it's all locked in. Everything's good, school bus is good. As you see, my stop the crush strut has loosened up. So now I can lay that down, it's not in place. Now I can attack that door with my stop the crush strut out of the way. I've opened up this area. Now I can come in with my cutters and my spreaders and open this door and do what I need to get that rest, get the, the patient out of this vehicle. Thank you for watching the second demonstration of the, the hydrofusion lift and the stabilization with the long shows of the school bus. Like I said, we use, we use in all the products that's, that's in that heavy kit with regards to chain, ratchet straps and everything else we've got. Again, thank you. And now I'm gonna put you over to uh, Mr. Robert O'Donnell. Thank you, Nigel. That was a great demonstration. It goes to show the, the force of those hydrofusions, how strong they are. The hydrofusions are very, very strong. And of course, he used to, he used it to lift the school bus there, but it would have been nothing for him to lift a concrete mixer or cement mixer. Um, it'd be no problem whatsoever. Uh, another lifting component in the highway, uh, the heavy vehicle extrication kit is the multi-force remote placement bag. Uh, we have done a, a webinar before on this, and if you weren't able to see it, it's available online, as all of our webinars are. You can contact either the factory or through customer service or go on the website, or you can get in touch with our uh, regional sales managers or, or even your dealers, and we'll all be able to get you in contact where you can look at these webinars. There's a lot of good information in here. So the multi-force bag that you see on your screen right now is uh, has a maximum capacity of 31 tons. It lifts a height of 26 inches. It has a stabilization base on it that's very large. You'll see right there, it's all put together in the kit form there. It has a, inside that bag is the control equipment that I'll go over in another slide and two hoses. And there's also the remote placement handle on there that allows us to both transport the bag to the location that we're gonna use it and also to use it to telescope that bag out and to be able to use it as a remote placement device so the rescuer doesn't have to get underneath it. Um, the bag is only one bag. If we talk about the bag right here in this slide, you'll see the bag fully inflated. Again, we said this is a 31 ton bag and it has 26 inches of, of lift height that it has there. That bag is very common. We have a training or uh, a demo for um, the individuals, the rescuers to get up there and check that seam in the middle. They want to know if that seam right there, I'm using my mouse there to show you, if that seam, if there's a ring in there, if there's a plate, um, if it's actually two bags, no, this, this is only one bag. Our engineers did a fantastic job designing this bag so there's only one bag that lifts in two different stages. Uh, as you lift, the first stage comes up. It gets that wide base from that stabilization platform that it's on. It keeps it stable. And then as it gets to a certain point, uh, a certain pressure, then the second stage kicks in and the second or the top part portion of the multi-force bag starts to telescope up. On the very top is a solid piece of aluminum. Um, it's got it's got kept, uh, excuse me, it's got rubber um, over the top of it, neoprene. So it's a very strong bag. It, it's got the internal relief valves for our safety, and it's uh, actually a game changer in the way that we we use bags now. We'll never replace the maxi force bags. We'll still always need a flat bag um, to get into tight spaces. But the amount of lift and and the amount of uh, use that we can get out of this bag is phenomenal. Uh, the control equipment, the control equipment that um, goes along with the remote placement multi-force is all in this bag right here. You'll see there's a uh, G2 150 PSI controller. That controller will go on to any SCBA cylinder. There is a dual dead man controller in the middle. The dual dead man controller allows for us to have 
um, two bags that we can use to discharge off of if we have to. So we could use the multi-force bag or this bag in this kit with another airbag if needed to. It's got a black hose and a yellow hose. Of course, we use the black hose for the supply from the regulator to the controller itself. And it's got an inline relief valve that we would use on the yellow hose that we would be hooking from the dual dead man controller to the multi-force bag itself. The inline relief valve would uh, has the 165 PSI inline relief valve incorporated into it. And this also has a, a quarter turn valve that we can use to cut off the supply to the uh, multi-force bag if needed. Some uses of the multi-force bags right here on your screen now. You can see them in single use applications. So one point lift uh, on the first right there on the left, that's at Nigel's out there in his backyard again at the factory. That's a dump truck he lifted. That dump truck does have a full engine in it. It went right to the very front. That steel member that you see underneath that, that dump truck was actually, it had a plow on it. So that plow configuration right there is, is was very rigid, very stern, and he hooked right up to the to the uh, the multi force right underneath it and lifted straight up. You see both the tires off the ground. Um, you will notice in that picture there that we don't have any stabilization. We still lift an inch and support an inch as we lift with the multi force bag here. But he was making a video there and showing how that multi force uses. We were not concentrating on the the support or, or uh, the, the stabilization of the dump truck. We're only showing the effectiveness of that bag. Um, in the middle picture there, you see that we have a, a dumpster that has been lifted with. So um, it can be used with conventional cribbing as well if it needs to be. If we wanted to, we could also so take that multi-force and put it up on top of cribbing. We could put uh, cribbing underneath the multi-force, put the multi-force bag on top of it, and then um, ex um, extend, expand the bag and inflate it to get the, the lift that we need. Um, just remember that when you do use um, your cribbing that you wanna make sure you have a solid base. On the right there is a lift with the multi-force bag of the rocker rail. We're gonna go a little bit more in depth with that here in our next picture here. I really like lifting from a rocker rail. Uh, many times, you know, when we have an auto pedestrian uh, patient underneath the vehicle, we don't have the purchase point to put the bag underneath the vehicle. So in the first picture here on your left, you'll see that the multi-force has been put underneath the rocker rail. Uh, we will have to make sure that the rocker rail is not compromised by any rust or, or uh, any um, weather related uh, damage to the, the rocker rail itself. But the first stage of the bag has started to lift here. And then you'll see the second bag stage of the bag is started to lift in the middle picture. And then on the third picture on the right, you'll see it fully inflated. Um, it's gained its control, it's kept its, it's all the, the weight is being transferred down through both stages of the bag into the wide stabilization base. You can see where the lifting handle and, uh, excuse me, the remote placement handle is uh, on the ground where the members have used to put it in place and slide into place. And then you can also see how much access you all have to the victim itself. I do like this lift. It's very friendly. It's very user friendly. We can get right to the victim with lots of, uh, lots of clearance and uh, a lot of result on our lift. Uh, just make sure again that we would, um, and again with this scenario, that we would stabilize as we go. We lift an inch and we support an inch. Another uh, lift that we do with our multi-force bags is a two-point lift. So there's two multi-forces here in these pictures here. Um, um, this tank on the left, you'll see that they cribbed up to the load. So they cribbed up and lifted those tanks. You can see the clearance you have on the track on the picture underneath it. In the middle there is another two-point lift. If you look through those tandem axles, you can see another uh, multi-force bag in, on a set of cribbing up underneath there. So they've used two bags to lift the tandem of that tractor, of that uh, trailer, excuse me, up. And then on the right there, this is using four of the multi-force bags with two-point lifts. So it's a two-point lift on this side, a two-point lift on the other. So again, just showing what the bag can do. And this one of these bags is included in this heavy vehicle extrication kit. Another example or another way that we can use this bag is in a horizontal plane. So on the left here in Canada, you see they used it in a rail yard. They took two um, flatbeds and they put the multi-force in between it. They created a space in between it by uh, expanding it all the way. And then in the middle picture there, that's a subway in New York City at the Fire Academy. Uh, the Rock there, they have a subway training um, scenario that they use there. And that is a video of using the hydro, uh, excuse me, the multi-force bag between the platform and the train and expanding all the way so they could get the dummy out. And all the way to the right is a scenario that came to us from 
uh, Connecticut. We're very proud to see when we get the pictures of our, our products being used in real life scenarios or real life rescues, I should say. And this lady was between the house and the fire department came in and blocked out or cribbed out, if you will, the base of the uh, multi-force between the building. And then they put the plywood up against the tire and they actually created the space needed to extricate the woman from in being in between the vehicle and the building. So uh, right now we're going to take it out back to Nigel and he's going to demonstrate how we can use those multi forces in the horizontal plane. Welcome back. <clears throat> we're back here at the Paratech playground for, for the third and last uh, demonstration in this webinar series. This one's going to be a separation uh, demonstration where we're going to use the, the multi force. What we've got, we've got a heavy vehicle bus, tractor, trailer, whatever, come up against the median, in this case, the school bus, hit the median. Because of the, the underwrite on the back, they can't extricate through the back door of the, the bus, so they're going to do one of two things. Either separate from the median so we can get in through the doors, or do your famous school bus extrication where you're going to cut the side off the bus. <clears throat> Takes a bit of time, so this may be the easier route. As you see, we've got a bit of space here. We've locked out the bus. We've locked out the vehicle in the back so it doesn't move. And uh, we're going to take a look at doing the separation. We're going to rescue it up on top of the, the medium with the, the multi-force airbag. Everything is set up, ready to go. <coughs> Excuse me. I got my piece of plywood that I'm going to use. What we're going to do is we're going to place the multi-force down in between the bus and the concrete block. I'm going to take my piece of plywood I'm going to put my piece of plywood in there. The rescuer is going to soft place this with the controller, soft place. Okay, it's held in place. So now the, the, the rescuer can just leave go of the handle and he's going to take it up slowly. Take it up at a nice even pressure so it doesn't jerk the bus. Just keep it going, John. And it's going to take that bus away from the, from the, the barrier. Keep going. <clears throat> keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, let it go, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, a little bit more. Okay, hold it there. Okay, now. John, if you can go down and check to see if we can open those doors. Doors can be opened so we can extricate the, the, the children or the people that's inside the school bus. I can do one or two things. I can leave the multi-force in place. Or I can put some cribbing in here just to hold it so it doesn't slide back. That, the rescuer is in the bus, extricating the, the, the children or the people that's in there. Now I'm good to go. Again, thank you for watching uh, this number six series in its uh, webinar, Paratech webinar series. We're here at the Paratech facility in Frankfurt where everything is made. Uh, I'd like to thank the guys here. I'd like to thank all the first responders that's out there that's doing what they do every day. Be safe out there and just keep doing what you do. I guess we'll see each other in the next year or two after all this calms down and we'll all have a beer together. Again, Thank you for watching today. I'm going to put you back over now to Robert O'Donnell's in our studio to finish up the webinar. Thank you. Nigel, thank you. you. That's a, a great um, scenario there. It does show again the use of the multi-force. A uh, special thank you to Nigel and the guys out there at the factory. I know it's hot out there today, but uh, adding that aspect to this, uh, these webinars with the, the live demonstrations is very nice. It was our first time doing it. Um, we, we hope it worked well and we hope that we'll do more in the future as we go. Um, Nigel is our training manager for a good reason. He's, he's very uh, knowledgeable. He's got a lot of experience and uh, very good what, he's what he does. He shares a lot of information with a lot of people and we're very thankful to have him on our team. 
So uh, in conclusion with the webinar today, again, we hope you all liked it. There will be a follow up email sent to all of you from your regional sales manager. Uh, there will also be a link for feedback and a link to uh, maybe next week's uh, webinar if you want to sign up for it. So uh, please uh, con consider taking some time next week to, to join us with another webinar. We appreciate the time that you you put together to spend with us. We do look forward to getting back out and training. Uh, I am in South Carolina. Um, part of my territory is responsible. My, my responsibilities are to to cover from South Carolina to Maine and uh, South Carolina is starting to open up and, and we're thankful for that. I was at a training uh, this past weekend in York, South Carolina. Um, it was all heavy vehicle and we used all the products that you saw right here today in the class. And it was just nice to be out with the guys again, uh, get some hand on and get out there and get some fresh air. So as Nigel said, we're looking forward to the opportunity to get back out there and, and meet with you all and, uh, and, and get our hands on our products together and go over these rescue techniques. So thank you again for everything that you do. And I'd like to shout out to the men and women at the factory for all they do. The men and women in assembly are, are putting the products together. They're still there. They're still making products and they're still shipping out worldwide. So uh, it's being used every day in rescues throughout the world. And we are very proud of that. And we're very thankful for all the support that you all give us. Um, I want to leave with this slide right here. It shows you planes, trains, cars, trucks, military, industrial, all the different uses that you can use this equipment in the heavy vehicle extrication kit. It's a, a robust kit. It has a lot of capacity and it's got great products. So uh, again, thank you for your time. Thank you for spending it with us. I hope that you're safe out there with your family at home and your family at work, and we hope to see you soon. Take care.